once you have more of an established camp, you want to start to upgrade your camp. That's what bushcrafting is all about, is to make camp life and outdoor life more comfortable for ourselves and people that come into our camp. So one tool that you can make right off the bat that's very important is just a simple baton. You can use it with your ax, with your knife, to pound in different tent pegs or wedges with different items. And you're basically just looking for um, some type of stick that is about from your bicep up to the tip of your fingers and maybe a little bit smaller than your wrist. Something that's very comfortable in your hand. Preferably made out of hardwood and that is going to lend well very well for tasks around camp But once that camps established, it's time to get rid of this and Make ourselves a proper mall, but before you throw it away like I did hold on to it because we're going to use that Baton to make this mall that we're going to make here in one second the first thing you're going to want to do is find some type of wood to make your mall out of now this is a piece of birch that I've had. Oak works really well. Any type of hardwood that you can find is gonna work well. I just have a lot of birch in my area and I think it's very comforting and easy to work with, so I like to use it. What I'm gonna first do though, is I'm gonna look at the piece of wood that I cut and I'm gonna try to find something without too many knots or um, burls or twists in it. And this section right through here looks really well for that. Right above it, there's a bunch of knots, and that's gonna work good for the mall itself because I can pound on that, and we all know that knots are really tough when you hit into a knot, so that's gonna work out very well. So I'm gonna cut the length of the mall that I want. I normally like to make a little bit smaller of a mall than most people, so I'm going to say that the head of it should be around eh, five, six inches, and the handle of it, we're gonna make a little bit longer than I normally do, that's gonna be about eight inches. And that can really vary. I have huge malls that I use with gluts to split logs, but this is gonna just be a camp mall, so I'm gonna make it just reasonable that I can carry and keep around camp. This is the most important step in making this. I identified where all these knots are is going to be the head of this mall. And the area down through here, which has no knots, is going to be my handle. So what I like to tell individuals to do is we're going to use our saw blade as a depth gauge. So let's identify first where we want that mall head, which is going to be right about here. And all that I'm going to do is I'm going to saw in until the saw blade is as deep as it is thick. So I'm just going to run the saw blade here, taking my time. Now you could see that center section is almost there another stroke, we're there. So that's as far in as I wanna go. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna rotate this piece of wood and I'm going to do the same thing all the way around it. Again, we're good. I could rotate this one more time. Good. Now, my cuts are going to be off a little bit, but that's all right. All that I'm going to do is continue on with this cut. Again, making it to depth, and I'm going to just continue around until I can get them cuts to meet up, which is right there. All right, now, we have a cut. So what does that mean? Well, now we can come to this backside with our baton and our ax and split this out. And then it's very little carving. It's just a very quick, easy tip to get this on the right track. So now I go find my baton again that I was trying to throw away. And what I like to do here is look at my saw blade depth because that's how deep we cut in. And then I can take my ax, I can place it there and I can start to baton. Once the wood splits out to our cut, it'll fall off. Here's one thing I wanna tell everybody though. Don't angle your ax in, because if you start to run in this way, what's gonna happen is you're gonna split out the head of the mall. So always think about leaning your ax outward a little bit when you're gonna do this. And you could see now, what we did, we split right down to that cut. 
I can turn this and take little wedges of this off. Now, here we ran into a little bit of a knot, which is fine, so Hercules will just rip it off. Okay, same thing, we're just gonna work our way around. So this is the same concept that we just talked about in a video not too long ago about splitting out larger lumber. It's just on a smaller scale. So it's the same, same thing, okay? Just working my way around. Now that I split off a good amount of material all the way around, I can start actually doing some carving. So remember, if you're gonna carve with your ax, choke up, keep your thumb out of the way so we're not hitting it to the backside and only bring that blade up that it's not as high as your thumb. You shouldn't be doing this, okay? You should just be down in this area. So what I'm gonna do is just work around the base of this to start to thin this handle out because this handle is way too big yet. So I'm just gonna work around to where I think would be a comfortable size. And you wanna start at the base, you don't wanna start at the top because remember, we don't wanna split that wood out. So see where we're at here. So we're starting to get that all cleaned up. It's looking good, yet this is so thick. So at this point, what we can do is we can either use our ax and process this or we can simply just take off our knife and start to trim this down. So I'm going to continue to carve this, but I actually, after making a few of these, you could see where I cut in with my ax and then I carve my knife and it gives us a nice bump in there. And I think that feels really good in your hand for just smaller work, especially if you're a batoning with a knife or with an ax, it feels really good. And heavier work, I can back down, get a little bit tighter grip on there and really whack. So that's a really nice feature you might wanna add into your mall when you do this. That's where we're at. I'm very comfortable with the handle. I think it feels really good in my hand. It has good weight to the head. What I like to tell people to do to finish this off is take the backside and bevel it, which is basically just trimming off that sharp edge that where we cut. Okay, very easy. And then we'll also go around and bevel this top side and bottom side. What that's gonna do is allow this um, less probability of splitting out or mushrooming. Now, if you wanna take the bark off, you can. I'm gonna let the bark on. I think it actually looks pretty good. And uh, that's it. So I'll bevel off the bottom side and I have myself a very nice maul for camp. Much better than that original stick, basically, AKA baton. So this really works out good. Drill a hole in this and hang it around camp. This was Dan Wolwack at Coal Cracker Bushcraft. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the kind of stuff I love to do because I love to make camp somewhere absolutely special and somewhere awesome. That when people come in, they're like, this is great. And it makes me more comfortable while I'm out of camp too. That's why I got in all this bushcrafting stuff because it's super enjoyable. So don't be afraid to experiment with this. You might mess a couple up, but hey, when you get a good one, you'll have it for life. Until the next video, guys, stay in the woods.